Well, thanks for coming, everyone. It's great to have you around the table. We have to pray before we eat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Bless us, O Lord, in these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, let's eat, everybody. Oh, thank God. The glasses are all fogged up with those masks. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a little problem, everyone. Where's the bread? We need the multiplication of the loaves. Ah, there we go. Glory, thank you, thank you. Glory. What would we do without bread, the staff of life? <laughs> what was it like to live without the Eucharist of our Lord? That's the more important question. Hmm. Regina, what was that like for you? Very difficult. Because when I receive the Eucharist, it helps me start the new week anew. And True. without it, yes. it was really tough. Mm. No doubt. I would, have to, I would have to agree with that. The celebration of the Eucharist is the pinnacle of our beautiful Catholic faith. And without it, you don't feel as whole. True. How true. It was a tough uh, few months, huh? We really missed our Lord. We really missed our Lord. Well, now we have the bread. Jesus has multiplied our food and our lives in him. So let's eat. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks again, Lord. <laughs> okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. A warm welcome, everyone, to all of our viewers today, especially from Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, St. Adalbert Parish, and St. Paul the Apostle Parish here in Schenectady, New York, and to wherever you are in the world tuning in today or on our broadcast on Schenectady Cable Access or Fios Access, a warm welcome to you. How does Jesus feed us with his word and with his sacrament? It's a question worth pondering surely as people of faith. Let us acknowledge now our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You give us the strength to carry our crosses with you on our side. Lord, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood as food for the journey. Christ, have mercy. You gather into one family all your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, Come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor present things nor future things nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, his disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, through the words of the Gospel. May our sins be wiped away. For those of our viewers from Schenectady who remember the old Channel 16 for Schenectady Public Access, you may remember one of my brothers of happy memory, Father Michael Hogan. Father Hogan used to have the Mass videotaped at the St. John the Baptist Church in Schenectady. And Father Hogan also had a half-hour weekly show on Channel 16 called 
Hogan on the Hill. And I will not forget one of the funniest episodes that I remember watching Hogan on the Hill way back in the day, tuning in to hear his wisdom, and he told you just what he thought. And one day, Father Hogan was sharing the story that people were asking him what to do with life's complications or problems, what would be his advice when there was a problem in one's relationship or one's job or at home. And Father Hogan said, do not depend at all on the bottle of liquor or any alcohol or any prescription drugs. It's all useless or any kind of external substance. Don't forget your M&Ms, though. You have to have M&Ms to eat, <laughs> and that'll make you feel better. Well, for Father Hogan, there must have been something in that chocolate that really uh, made him give that advice to all of the people around him. And I thought, well, it could be as simple as M&Ms. Who knows, dear people? Uh, may Father Hogan rest in peace. But he gave us great wisdom and was a pastor in Schenectady for many years. May he rest in peace. And we look at the life of God and how the Lord has fed us, not with chocolates, but with the elixir of life. When Israel was enslaved and in captivity, not just for one generation, but for many generations, the people longed to see their land. The people longed to be back where they came from in a land of peace and stability that was their own. Not enslaved in Babylon, not somewhere else, but back home. And that went on and on for generations. In the prophecy of Isaiah then, come and eat Come and drink without paying, without cost. This is the Lord who wants to feed us, is reminiscent of the time of Israel way back, who had forgotten what it was like to be back home in their land and back to enjoy a wonderful banquet, which, of course, the Lord had provided. And so Isaiah announcing the Lord's words, sought to build up the attitudes of the people who were despondent and who were woebegone because they were enslaved. Come and eat and come and drink that the Lord will feed you. No matter how this may feel so difficult now, this enslavement and this captivity. And dear friends, we can compare to our own present situation in some small way. We have in our current midst the virus lockdowns. Now, praise God, we are back open with some restrictions on the capacity of our churches, but we are back to our four masses. Praise God, this is good news. But yet we know there are our brothers and sisters who are a bit afraid to come back right now, and that's okay. We certainly respect that view. But this is the situation that we find ourselves in. And we can't just snap a finger and the effects of the virus will be over with tomorrow. This is going to be something that will be for the long term. And if for the long term, we must then ask ourselves, how has the faith of God multiplied in us that we can share from generation to generation, what God has provided us. Who knows how long this will last? But nonetheless, we still have good news to share. How the Lord has multiplied our faith over and over again. Not just with the multiplication of loaves, fish, or physical goods, but He has multiplied justice and mercy and forgiveness and adherence to his teachings. These are some matters that we must be attentive to, even in the midst of the lockdown. That should we tune in every week to this platform, praise God for that, you and I are still disciples of the Lord. 
even if we cannot be fed here at his table with his body and blood sacramentally, we are still ministers of Jesus' word, still called forth and sent to preach, even from home. We all have telephones. Some of us have computers, smart devices, smart telephones. We are ministers of his communication. Not God's word, but we are announcing that word not as our own, but as his that he has given us. We are not God, but it is the Lord's word that we announce in our own communications with others. And so, we take a look at the introductions that we have provided to these weekly celebrations, whether it be at Saratoga or by the shore or at the dinner table. Of course, it's meant to give us a laugh or two uh, in the spirit of Father Hogan and others, but it is also for another purpose that this introduction of faith is a segue of the soul, that we, even though we cannot gather or are not comfortable gathering yet inside of the church, that we are still able to connect life's events to the Word of God. The good Lord has given us two eyes to see and ears to hear and the mind to put together our thoughts and the heart to have feelings. We are still ministers of God's Word, and we hear it, we see it, we absorb it. And that is the challenge for discipleship today, that even from afar, though without the walls of the parish building that we are familiar with, we are still disciples of the Lord who have been fed by God's Word over and over again. And so, that gift that God gives us in the senses, we can use to connect all of life's events, Saratoga, the lake in the summer, the garden, the weeds, the dinner table, wherever it is, God is alive and God is present. And that it is not simply a reality that God is alive on Sunday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. God is alive yesterday, today, and forever, and always, all of the time. Now we need the eyes of faith to discern carefully what God's plan is for us. That as we are announcers, we are not just announcing what we think, but we are announcing the words of God as well. And so, St. Paul VI, in the gift of the Eucharist that Jesus provides, shared this for the church, and I quote, the Eucharist is a pledge of Jesus' immense love, her most precious treasure, to perpetuate the sacrifice of the cross throughout the centuries until he should come again. And so to entrust to his beloved spouse, the church, a memorial of his death and resurrection. The sacrifice of our Lord is perpetual, immemorial, and will always be here. No matter how long the current trial lasts in our lives, no matter how long the virus may present certain regulations or restrictions on how to gather, no matter how uncomfortable we may feel in life, God's sacrifice is for us, and we can still make an act of spiritual communion to be with Him and to be His people. And that no matter what, at the dinner tables of our lives, that we see the multiplication of Jesus' word and how our faith has grown in the past four months and four years and four decades. 
Oh, has it ever grown if we only sat back to account for how to deal with life's struggles? Far more than chocolate, dear friends, or M&Ms, <laughs> is God's Word multiplied over and over again. But thank the good Lord, He has been here all along, is here right now, and will never leave us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the church that we may continually rededicate ourselves to feeding the hungry, satisfying the thirsty, clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, caring for the ill, and visiting the imprisoned, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer that all leaders in our country and our world may work together to eradicate hunger and homelessness and poverty in all cities, towns, and nations, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are threatened or attacked because of their faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer, that we may be a welcoming community, inviting those with sincere hearts to join us at our feast, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who labor still under the effects of this current virus, all who care for them, and all essential workers who sacrifice to keep us safe and to lift up their vocations in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Eleanor Becker, Linda Vernon and Jake DiCoco, who fell asleep in the Lord this week, and also for these souls for whom I apply the, this Mass, Josephine Sifo, Anita Riccio, Yola Scholes, Alta Gerald, Joanne Alheim, James J. Gray, Daniel and Mary Statuto, Isabella Canestraro, Sherry Melideo Roberts, Norman D'Agostino, Giovanna Jessic, Angeline Caccilio, Edith Green, Richard Sickler, Mary Lou Masseroni, Mary Irene Mara, Irene Courier, Pauline Bresky, Emanuela Oliainka and Joy Ayuinka Colade, and for an intention in honor of St. Gianna Beretta Mola, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And that our prayers that we have presented before the altar of the Lord may be granted by God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
forgiveness, we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, O Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of the angels and the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. O Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward Scharfenberger, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, everyone. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. It has been an honor to have you join us for this broadcast of the Mass. Thank you to everyone for all of your time in spending before our Lord 
in this special moment of communion with him and a special word of welcome to those who are not Catholic and thinking about being nourished further by the good Lord or those who had fallen away for one reason or another and have pressed play or who have tuned in to hear some word of comfort from dear Jesus. A warm welcome for you as well. You are in my prayers in a special way this week. I hope you are fed by Jesus every day and every moment, and we know you are, if we can open our eyes to the reality of God's presence in our lives. He has fed us very well. Have a great week, everybody, and be well. Stay healthy. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
You're still taking pictures? <laughs> Oh, video! Oh, okay. oh boy! <laughs> you never know when it will appear. Yeah, that's right. Oh boy! <laughs>